Hello and good morning. It is Wednesday, April 7th. It is exam day. It's been a long day coming, but as promised, I, I like to, to drop a video on YouTube ever so often before test, just as a little uh, last minute memory jogger before you go into the big day. So today what I wanted to take a second and talk about is a video I thought I had and apparently I don't, which is economic sensitivity tables, how they work, what they do as a what if analysis tool inside Excel. Uh, and specifically we're going to look at our one variable and two variable data tables, just like what we did in class. So what does a one variable or a two variable data table do for you? Well, if you've got some type of data model, if you've got some kind of uh, independent and dependent variable connection or relationship, right? So for example, if we're looking at homes, which is what we're looking at now, we've got inputs and we've got outputs, right? So we've got independent variables and we've got dependent variable, or as Excel calls them, do, 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 we have precedence and we have dependence, okay? So if you're working with economic sensitivity tables or really any what if analysis tool in Excel, you know that if you can't do an audit and see some kind of relationships between the inputs and the outputs, Excel's not gonna do anything for you. Because Excel doesn't, doesn't really understand anything other than what you tell it. So if you don't say, hey, this is the relationship between inputs and outputs, it's not really gonna know what to do, okay? economic sensitivity tables do for you? Well, let's set one up and I'll show you. So the first step to setting up an economic sensitivity table is to add uh, substitution values. Now, why would you do that? Well, what does a sensitivity table do? Well, for example, in this particular case, we've got a house that costs 150,000 with a down payment of 10,000, an interest rate of 4% if it's financed for 30 years with 12 payments made per year because we always pay our mortgage monthly. So based on that, our loan is 140,000, our periodic interest rate, right? Rate per period, 33%, 360 total payments, and you know how to calculate PMT. You've been doing that since freshman year. The monthly payment would be 668.38. So a common question that would come up is, well, what would happen if my interest rate goes up? Well, if the interest rate goes up to 5%, your payment goes to 751.55. So basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at how sensitive the monthly payment is compared to the changing variable of the interest rate, okay? So as a person that's doing this as an analyst, you could go through and you could just individually plug in an interest rate, and every time you do it, you could figure out, well, this is what the monthly payment is. And that would work just fine. Oops. That would work just fine. Um, that being said, though, a faster way to do it would be to create a sensitivity table that will show you at each individual step change of interest rate how it will be impacted. That's what an economic sensitivity table does. So, for example, if I start off with 4% and I create a substitution value, so let's say I want to look at how incremental quarter percentage point changes affect my payment as well as my total repayment and my total interest, well, I could do that. Um, I'll just start off by setting up some, some substitution values. So let's, let's do uh, a substitution value within the columns of 0.25% up to say 8%. And it automatically did that for us, although you could manually type them in and it wouldn't make a big difference. Okay, so that's our first step. So these are our substitution values that will be used to show us how changing each one of these interest rates will impact that monthly payment. So the next thing we need to plug in is, hey, what do we want to see? What, what are we actually looking at to, to gauge sensitivity? So we can do multiples. We don't just have to do one. So in this case, we'll do the monthly payment. We'll do the total repayment. And we'll do the total interest paid, like so. And we can just put a label in here, just so you know what that is. So to create a one variable sensitivity table, it's actually pretty easy. We'll just select this data. We'll go to data, what if analysis, and data table. And for the column input, right? So the columns, okay, they're being affected, right? So these are dependent on the interest rate. 
So for the column input here, we're going to plug in the original interest rate of 4% and voila, our economic sensitivity table is done. So it looks weird because it's not formatted correctly, but there you go. So now you could test this, right? So at a six and three quarter interest rate, according to the sensitivity table, your monthly payment is 908.04. Well, this is built off the model information over here, which means that you could test it by simply changing the interest rate over here to 6.75, in which you get 908.04. So the only thing that's happening here is that the sensitivity table is running through your model all these different permutations, just like you could, it's just doing it way faster, which is exactly what technology does, right? It does the same thing you do, just does it way faster than you do. So it's not smarter, it's really just faster, right? So that's what it's, uh, a one variable data table does. Now we're gonna clean this up a little bit and I'll remind you on the exam today that you should do the same. Be sure to label accordingly, be sure to set your uh, values to appropriate format. And I'll even jump in and we'll add some custom labels up here to give you payment, total interest repaid, total uh, repayment. So how do I do this? Well, I'm gonna jump in to my account, excuse me, my number format. I'm gonna go to custom and we'll go to general. And just like we did in class, I will call this one payment. And now, even though this really is 668.38, it's gonna appear as the word payment, which I will then center and you know, do all the things. There we go. So we'll do the same thing here. This will end up being total repaid. We'll go custom, we'll go general, total repaid. We'll go here, we'll go here. And then the last thing we'll do is total interest paid, boom. We'll go custom, we'll go general, and we'll go uh, total interest, like so. Boom, we got that, we got this, we got this. And our one variable data table is, is perfect, right? Now, it's not enough to just build this thing. You really want to use that business acumen of yours. You really want to think about, hey, like, what's my break point, for example? Like, if I, if I wanted to spend 800 bucks a month, where can I sit? Well, at 800 bucks a month, five and a quarter is not, five and three quarter doesn't get it done, right? You've gone over. So if you want to spend 800, your break point is going to be right there, okay? Excuse me, not 500, 800. If you want to spend 800, your break point is five and a half percent interest. That's the best you can do. So what does a two variable data table do for you? Well, let me copy these substitution values and put them over here. What if we wanted to explore not just our interest rates, what if we wanted to explore the interaction of the cost of the home and the interest rate, right? So in other words, when I say interaction, I'm saying how does the changing independent variables of house cost and interest rate affect the dependent variable of monthly payment, okay? So we could just make up some, some general ideas, right? So what if the house is 150,000? What if it's 200,000? And what if it's 250,000? Like so. So three different prices here. So notice we did this differently, right? So uh, in the prior example of a one variable data table, we had payment, total repay, total interest, right? And we had references to those formulas. So again, if I were to run a trace of precedence, our data table knows things, and that's important, right? So if you can't do this, there's no understanding inside Excel of how to build this table, and you'll just get a bunch of nothing, okay? But notice, in this table, we don't have references here. We've got actual straight up numbers, because what we'll need to do is, in this intersection cell here, we'll need to add a reference to that monthly payment. So one of the things that's different here, oh, we don't want that, we wanna reference this. One of the things that's different here is that with a two variable data table, right, two variable data table, you have this intersection cell here between one independent variable and the other independent variable, and that is where your reference to your original model goes. Whatever goes inside that intersection cell here, which is the reference to the monthly, oh, reference to the monthly payment, okay, that's what's gonna show up here. So it's gonna show you, hey, the intersection of this and this, what does that do to the payment? Intersection of this and this, what does that do to the payment? What does that do to the payment? So on and so forth, okay? 
So first thing, you know you can't do anything while your audit arrows are on, so we'll turn those off. We'll jump in, we'll select our entire table. We'll go to data, we'll go to what if, we'll go to data table again. So now we've got something slightly different. You've got two variables instead of one. So we'll start off with the columns, right? These are the columns going down. The columns are being affected, they're being impacted, they're being modified based on the APR. So the column input cell for the columns to be paid to, to be tested against would be APR. The difference here would be the row input cell. So the rows are the interest rates going down, and those are being directly affected by the interaction of cost of home. I click OK, and here's how you test it, right? So what did our original model say? It said at 154% payment 668.38. At 150 at 4 percent payment 668.38. So at 200,000 and 6 percent payment is 1,139. So if we wanted to spend $800, what we could figure out is we can't buy a $200,000 house at all. We can't buy a $250,000 house at all, right? Because those were all over 800,000, no matter what the interest rate is. But we could buy a $150,000 house at as much as 5.5% interest. So this is our happy place. And this is our happy place. Now what if we said we wanted to move to $1,000? Well, that's different. At $1,000, you could get a $150,000 house at 7.5%. You could get a $200,000 house at 4 and 7, uh, 3 quarter percent. Or you still couldn't buy a $250,000 house. So that's kind of how it works. To finish this off, we'll clean this up. So we'll go ahead and put a custom label here. Boom. Boom, just like that. And we'll make it look nice. We'll go here, we'll go here. And that's it, my friends. One and two variable data tables, sometimes called economic sensitivity tables. Good luck today, my friends. Let me remind you that everything we just talked about today is in Chapter 6 of your awesome textbook, Exploring Excel 2019. And I'm a little biased because I helped work on it, but I do think it will help you guys out today. Uh, I will say that I think the book slows you down if you try to look at the book during class. So my suggestion would be check out Chapter 6, like all of Chapter 6, this morning as that last little bit of a look. Because yes, there will be solver, and yes, there will be economic sensitivity tables <coughs> Excuse me, on the test today. So with that, my friends, I will bid you adieu. I will see you at either 1 o'clock Eastern Time or 2.15 Eastern Time. So with that, good luck, my friends, and I'll see you soon.